2K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. And just about to get underway as the starting fives have been announced. Sit tight. We'll be back in just a moment. The 2K Sports Pre-Game Show. All right, here we go, sports fans. Tonight, it'll be the Oklahoma City Thunder against the Clippers out in Los Angeles. Checking out the Clippers, they feel like they're at their best when they start fast, get into a rhythm early on, and get everyone involved. Offense, defense, on the glass, they're looking for a total team effort tonight. And Coach Billy Donovan, not too long ago, made the jump from college to the NBA. Kenny, that's... Never an easy transition. They're two completely different worlds, Ernie. You know, the college game and the pro game, two different. But how you fill out your roster and how the game is played is totally different. But Billy's doing a great job of handling it. Yeah, he is. We've seen a lot of recent college coaches like Brad Stevens make a fairly seamless transition. Uh, but, the, for, but for Billy Donovan, I think the jury's still out. Well, that's a wrap for here. We'll join you uh, a bit later. Welcome, everyone, to the NBA on 2K Sports. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin Harlan. And joining us tonight, Greg Anthony and Hall of Famer Doris Burke. And reporting from the sidelines, our very own David Aldridge. Now the opening lineup for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Robertson and Gallinari at the small and power forward position. Gilgis Alexander out there with Paul. And it's Adams in at the center position. And for the Clippers, they're down low at four with Harrell in the middle. Beverly and Williams, the guard tandem. And it's George in at the three, the small forward. We're looking forward to the center matchup tonight, Doris. What do you expect to see from these guys inside? Well, I think there's a requisite physicality in there, certainly. Uh, at the same time, there are greater demands on big men, Kevin, than we have ever seen before. Yes, they have to be rim protectors. Yes, they have to control the paint. But now those bigs are asked to defend in space, to guard on the perimeter. Kevin, you know this. That's a tall task. And Harold shoves it in. Exceptional vision by Paul George. This guy is tearing up the defense. Paul against Beverly. The shot's good from Paul. Pick works well there. Not much resistance from the D. It takes incredible effort to stay connected to the hip of the offensive player. You've got to want to work. Now, here's George. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. We are talking about a proficient, efficient scorer in Paul George. Go to work, sir. Doris, you can't say enough about the defense of Paul George. I mean, he is absolutely terrific on that end of the floor. That is in addition to being an all-NBA level offensive performer. So you think about what Paul George brings on the defensive end. The on-ball defense is incredible. He knows when to help off on drives. This guy is easily one of the best defenders at his position, if not the best. Now Beverly, following Chris Paul's three-point attempt, shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. Many thought the Raptors or Lakers would land Kawhi, but in the end, he came to the Clippers to write his own legacy. Returning to Southern Cal, where he grew up, was a big part of his decision. The big surprise was how Kawhi was out recruiting other Take stars behind the scenes to join him with the Clippers. That one is off. And maybe the biggest story of this summer, where would Kawhi Leonard be headed in free agency? A, a player of his caliber commands that kind of media scrutiny. Catching up on the changes for the Clippers. Zubats is checked in for Harold, and Landry Shamit subbed in for Williams. He doesn't get the second one. Boy, that's not the result I would have predicted. Usually you can take those to the bank when he's at the line. Ball finds Noel. Now Gallinari. Ball outside. Six to shoot. Over Beverly. The shot's good from Paul. 
And here in the first, closing in on two minutes play. Beverly against Paul. We've got 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Shot clock at six. Beverly for three. Can't hit that one. It'll count. A shot that time, not on target. It's all tied here in Los Angeles. Let's take a quick break now, and then it's on to the second quarter after this. Chris Ball talks about the matchups he faces at the point guard. The toughest position in the NBA night in and night out is the point guard position. You know, every night you look at the board, uh, the coach is pretty much going to say, their team goes as such and such goes. You know what I mean? So that's the toughest part, and that's probably the funnest part, too, because uh, it's competition. And CP3, one of the most competitive players in the game. It's an obsession with him, and you can see how hard he gets after it every time he takes the court. And some good action in the books as we get back to the game that's been pretty close here so far. Guys, what's your take on the Clippers so far? Well, the offense is clicking, and they seem to have seized the momentum here early on. Boy, it's been a really pretty thing to watch, executing their game plan to perfection. Everly and Shamit in the backcourt together. Jamichael Green is out there with Paul George, and it's Zubats in at the five down low. They're the group out there for the Clippers starting the second quarter. Now, here's Zubats. It's the jump hook. Zubats has got the lead up to two now for Los Angeles. I'll grade the Clippers signing of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, the grand finale of the wildest summer in NBA free agent history. A ton of big moves. You think of the star players who've changed teams, one-third of the league's all-NBA selections, and five out of ten of the reigning all-star starters. In the end, we saw seven players who've changed teams, signing for over $100 million each. Put that in perspective. Only eight players have ever done that in league history. Here's George after the made shot from Dennis Schroeder. And he makes good on the way. What energy on the offensive boards. The defense can't match the effort, and they paid the price. Got to recognize the situation. Trying to get a two-for-one. Well, this is where the play call is crucial, right? If you're in a two-for-one, you've got to get the first shot quickly. Now, here is Muscala. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. And it's Gallinari missing. About three seconds between shot and game clock. To the paint. Here's George. The Thunder pull it in. Boy, a clean, close look. What a missed opportunity. Pass to Gallinari. That's going to be over and back. Not watching for the line that time. So it's both teams making substitutions here. And here in the second, two minutes gone by. The three from George. The shot missing. So that'll be it for the first half. Fairly even battle underway in this one. Clippers lead by two. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in just a moment. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello, basketball fans. What a pleasure it is to bring you into the 2K studios again. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. A pretty close game for the Clippers throughout the first quarter. Nothing seemed to give way on either side of the scoring column as they wrapped up the period all knotted up. The second quarter was a tight battle, but they were the slightly better team. Not by very much, however. And taking a look at the Clippers, Kenny, what did you see out there? Well, their shooting accuracy was on point. It was good play calling, of course, by the coaching staff, but it was great execution by the team. And, big fella, let's get your thoughts on the Thunder. Well, they remind me of Arizona. They were flat defensively. They didn't collapse at the end. They allowed over 50% shooting. I expect them to come out much more aggressive in the second half to try to take the lead early on. And that's a wrap. With the third quarter approaching, we now send you back to Kevin and the crew. Giant. 
we've got second half action for you. And if the next couple quarters are similar to the first, this one could go down to the last possession. Lewis, if I would ask you right now in the league, who has the most unstoppable shot, who would you tell me? You know what's interesting, Kevin, is I wonder if in the long view of history, James Harden's step back three will become sort of an identifiable shot with him the way the sky hook was with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes, right? Yes. Like, oh, you wonder, does that become a signature, signature play for James? It certainly is something that's darn near impossible to stop right now. Third quarter action getting rolling right now. Brought to you by Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Here's who's on the floor. So for Oklahoma City right now, Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Paul out there with Gilgis Alexander, and it's Robertson in at the three seat. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Well, Lou Williams won sixth man of the year for the third time last season. He joined Kevin McHale and Detlef Shrimp as the only players to win the award in consecutive seasons. And with the most career points ever scored off the bench, maybe they should just name this award after him. Kevin? <laughs> David, I'm all for it. Thank you so much. And boy, is he in good company. Stolen by George. And pushing it up, here's the Clippers. George with the ball, uses the glass to drop it in. George has got four points this quarter. There's a rhythm with which Paul George plays the game of basketball. That pace is so important. Paul passes to Adams, and that one drops for him. Adams. Great job of screening there. Nice job to take it to the rim and get the finish. Now here's Williams. He'll just Alexander cover. Leonard. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Williams. Leonard's got the lead back up to four now for Los Angeles. They can close out the quarter if they want to. It's all about patience right here. Patience and execution. Get a good look. Beverly wide open. No good from outside. Here's Robertson. And Paul launches it from deep. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And we've watched three so far in this one. Los Angeles on top. They lead by four. And we're coming right back after this break to get the fourth quarter underway. And it's been a very competitive game so far as we get rolling here in quarter number four. Los Angeles leading by four. Janet Leonard are on the wing. Jamichael Green is out there with Carroll, and it's Williams at the point guard position. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Clippers. He gets that one. One thing that stands out over the course of Leonard's career is how efficient and effective he has been on the offensive end. Now here's Paul. And he uses the glass on the lane. Money. There shaves a few points off the lead. And the later we get into this game, the more you're going to see him attacking the basket. Here is Williams. Passes it through Leonard. That's tipped. The defense from Andre Robertson is nothing short of sensational. To the inside. Goes straight through the defender for the dunk. Draws the foul. He'll go to the line. It's on Kawhi Leonard. Can't afford these defensive breakdowns, especially down the stretch. And right now, Craig, neither side can get a stop. Looks like both coaches will have plenty of material for the film room. Good on that one. 
What I love about Stephen Adams is he approaches the game with a level of physicality that sets a tone for his team. Outstanding defensively and growing offensively. Williams can't hit. And Gilgis Alexander has got the ball here for Oklahoma City. A two-point game. Oh, wow, a huge I'm basket to tie the game. Oh, you just love seeing a player with absolutely no fear. And Greg, to me, more often than not, when you attack, good things happen. And the Clippers call time here. Checked in for Los Angeles. Patrick Beverly comes in for Landry Shamit. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. Hey, Kevin, during the last break, I heard Doc Rivers talking with his team. This now, Paul. The time called here. The Thunder decide to talk it over. They're trailing by two. 29 seconds left in the game. Seconds left in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma City moving the ball around. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Well, an elite perimeter defender, Andre Robertson, uses that impressive length to bother players. What a solid role player this guy has become. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. as he doesn't get the first one to fall. Trying to focus now on the second. And no good on the second free throw. So he goes over for 2 there. And now they decide to foul intentionally. Here's Leonard. 23 seconds left to play here in the fourth. And so they choose to intentionally foul. 
second team foul. Shooting for Los Angeles, Kawhi Leonard. At the line for two. So the first one drops, and that makes it a three-point lead. We are looking at the MVP of the 2014 Finals. Can we remember that in that series, Kawhi Leonard shot 60%, and he guarded LeBron James? And so both free throws are good, and it's a four-point ball game. He's able to make it a two-possession game with some solid work at the line right there. Now here's Gilgis Alexander. Defense is right there. And now they foul and stop the clock. Yeah, you, you can't let them hold the ball and just milk those last seconds away. First personal foul. Third team foul. Shooting for Los Angeles. Kawhi Leonard. Taking two shots. Gets the first, and that puts them up by five. And so he drops them both. It's a six-point ball game. That's what you call slamming the door. This one is over. Paul kicks to Gilgis Alexander. Can't connect from long distance. And he's a good shooter from outside, but not sure from that deep. Boy, we're seeing it more and more. Guys looking to create additional space by stepping back further from the line. So the Clippers with the win. They didn't make it easy on themselves or their fans, but in the end, everyone's satisfied. I mean, there were some times that that momentum shifted, and, and, and especially early on, but let's give this group a lot of credit for that stick to itiveness in terms of finishing out and executing that game plan. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much, Paul. Congrats on the win. Where is your team's attitude right now? Continue to, you know, play together. And we can just stick to that, keep working, staying confident, keep defending, um, and knocking shots down. We'll be all right. Looked like it all came together tonight, Paul. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, and the rest of our terrific crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you next time.